My name is Thomas um, and I'm a German living in Austria. I founded a company a few years ago as was mentioned before called Games Institute Austria but actually um, by education I'm a teacher and a linguist and I worked for quite a while in, in education and had to realize that somehow some students are not that easy to reach. Maybe they don't even come to class. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is probably uh, what they are presented. And mm. me as a teacher, I was always in the trenches. I was always doing that job that no one else wanted to do. Like going to these classes, talking to these kids. And as I am a gamer, a quite a complicated term, I think all of you understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about that I am a gamer, even though it's a very complex concept, um, we had a topic. And that topic actually opened doors. And I realized that, I think it's about 10 or 12 years ago, that we actually, we, we had that connection through that topic. And we, we had something to discuss. And, and um, therefore, I finally came up with the idea Actually, games are just sets of problems. They are something to learn. They are something to solve. They are challenging and you have to master them. So what they offer is not that far away from education, but somehow they are not offered in education. Um, so I just dropped out. I thought, well, okay, I'm done with that. I will do my own thing. And I started that company. I did not bring a photo of me. I do not present myself in the presentation. You can see me live here. I think that's enough. Uh, but I still need to talk a little about me and why <coughs> am I doing this. Because if you have a look at that first slide, you are probably a bit puzzled. There are so many words that you probably do not understand. Of course, it's about entrepreneurship. You should have gotten that now. <laughs> okay? So that's what we're here for. But what I'm going to present to you in the next few minutes is a very specific world. A world that is huge in Denmark, by the way. You are one of the leading countries in the world when it comes to esports. So, should be really up your alley what is next. Even though you might be puzzled. Don't worry, it's fun. Okay? Maybe you might even enjoy it yourselves while learning. But I don't want to <laughs> lead you somewhere uh, you might be uh, not feeling well. Okay, so esports. I don't know. You might have heard of that concept. Esports is something quite, well, special. It starts out with the writing. You can see here I wrote esports with the capital E in the beginning. Then I start out my, my definition. It's a quote, so that's why I, uh, it's written that way, I start with a, with a small e and a capital S. And then there's another one and another one and another one. People don't agree on it. The more it gets accepted, the more it looks like a real word. Like with proper pronunciation. But eSports is actually pretty straightforward. It's people playing games against each other competitively. So we are actually talking about something similar to sports competition. I say similar because there's a, an ongoing discussion, it's mostly about rights and money, but um, the question if esports is sports is one that is moving people for a few years now. For most people doing esports, it doesn't matter at all. They are doing esports anyway. But they, ha they share a similar approach, a similar mindset to real world athletes. And besides that, so we are actually talking about competitiveness, about people being competitive, people achieving in the digital realm. So we are talking about something that is mediated by human computer interfaces, <laughs> which sounds quite okay when it comes to education. Uh, we heard about Odense Robotics. We heard a lot about tech startups. So we are sort of in that area. But it's a bit different. Because I don't know if you have ever played 
any video game or even an esports game, we are talking about something that is very specific. We are talking about these games. You might not have heard most of them. League of Legends, a MOBA, a multiplayer online battle arena. Yeah, sounds weird. It's not that easy to explain. I see a few people grinning already and nodding. So I'm not a complete alien here, but we are talking about very specific games. For example, LOL or CSGO or Valorant or Fortnite. You might have heard Fortnite before. It's your kids playing that, you know? <laughs> and Rocket League and PUBG Battlegrounds and Hearthstone and so on and so on and so on. These are the major tier esports. Major tier means these are the most played and most viewed esports games in the world. Just a few weeks ago, there was the World Championship of uh, League of Legends. And the final had a concurrent viewership of more than 73 million people watching live. So we are talking major events. We are talking major companies and we are talking big money. So this is quite interesting when it comes to entrepreneurship, especially as some of the, of, uh, the most successful organizations, for example, uh, in uh, CSGO are actually Danish. There is Astralis, one of the best teams in the world. Uh, maybe two years ago you might have said the best team, but it's back and forth. And there are a lot of young Danish people who are very much into esports. They live esports. All of their life is esports. And um, these are the kids that actually go to your schools or might not even come to your school because of law, maybe, or PUBG. I don't know. And it might be interesting to reach them. It might be interesting to actually uh, use this fascination, this competitiveness, this um, attitude of being the best in education. So, I don't know, it was 2019, Rasmus, I think. I came to Denmark once before. I met Rasmus and just, I think, over coffee, we were talking about, well, okay, so what's up for the future? And I said, you should de do esports at, at your institution. He said, okay, well, okay, what is esports exactly and why? <laughs> and then we've, we started developing that idea. And today, there is esports at VUC. And it's quite successful. And it's even connected with esports Denmark, the national professional organization. It's connect in connection with DGI, with the, I, please don't let me explain what exactly DGI is, you might um, know it. And um, we are also planning on doing a project that has the title Reaching the Unreachables. So it's about using esports to bring in students that might not come otherwise and even use this fascination and this drive to bring them and be motivated and maybe even be an entrepreneur. Because it's about that. Um, I said it before, esports is big. We are, we are talking about a market that is ever growing. You can see the, the stats here on the right. I, I just had to look up for, for the latest one because they change all the time and they change for the better even. The estimate in 2020, last year, was that the, the viewership for esports globally in 2023 would be 650 million. This is the, the, the charts this year. 2021, we already have almost 730 million audience. And it's supposed to be 920 million in 2024, and I guess it's going to be going even higher. And we are, we are talking about stadiums sold out in a few minutes. So this is major sports, this is major entertainment, and it's something that the kids love. 
need to, need to check the watch. You need to hurry a little. But eSports is kind of a new thing. It started out, well, this is probably the oldest photo that you can find of an eSports competition. It's from the late 70s and I think it's an Atari Space Invaders competition. It's the first official, uh, it wasn't called eSports back then, but it was the f one of the first major competitions to play video games against each other more or less. And as you can see, it's just some random kids. And eSports is that. It's a grassroots movement. You can go to any club, to any school, wherever in Denmark or wherever else, and you will find these kids doing it. Maybe they are fans of Fnatic or Astralis or whatever, but they do it on a local level. They do it with friends, they do it online, but they also do it offline. It's probably one of the major topics in your schoolyard every single day. It's the thing that boys talk about. There was this, this interview uh, two years ago of your fo um, former prime minister, Mr. Rasmussen, and he stated in 2019, that was actually before the pandemic, that 96% of the boys played video games on a regular basis, like at least twice a week. 96%. There's not many left. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everyone. So, so might, be, might be an interesting topic for society, for entrepreneurs, for uh, education. And why is that important for this conference and for this project? Because if we talk about esports as, as a culture and as an industry, it is quite interesting. We are talking about a digital form of entertainment. We are talking about a global competition. And we are talking about agile businesses. I will do a workshop in the afternoon and you are all invited. You don't need to go to the other workshops, okay? <laughs> because it's the best one, maybe. Um, but we will, we will try to do esports and we will, of course, we will play a game too. A simple one. No worries. It's not going to be League of Legends, it's not going to be Fortnite, and it's not going to be PUBG. It's a game you probably don't know. But that's the clue. You find any game that you like and you find other people that like it, so you start doing competitions. You start doing live streams, you start organizing tournaments. And that's actually eSports. All of eSports has been developed from scratch. I saw an interview last week uh, of the co-founder of ESL. Um, ESL, I think it's Turtle Entertainment, and they, they were bought by, by MTG, a Swedish media house, and um, he was talking about the early beginnings and how they carried all these heavy computer monitors to this bar and to that place and so on. And they started out because they were interested in doing tournaments. Today, they are the biggest broadcasting company in esports. They are doing many major events. And we are talking filling arenas, like in Cologne or in Katowice or Madison Square Garden or whatever. They fill these arenas and they do the broadcasting. And they had no clue back then. That was the mid-90s, 1996, 1998, and they were just guys loving it. And from that it developed. They didn't even know that this is going to be a business. And this attitude you can still find today. You will find it in local clubs. Uh, we, we, we did a project a year ago uh, in, in uh, Lower Austria in Weidhofen and they came up with the idea, okay, we should maybe start an esports club there too. Last year, in spring, I think. And the club exists still. And this summer, they reached a um, uh, membership number of higher than 500. We are talking a small town in Lower Austria. That's like 
you have no idea about Lower Austria, like I have about Funen, but it's somewhere, actually in the middle of nowhere. And there are 500 young people interested in doing that and joining a club. And what they are doing there is uh, they, they drive the development of esports. They, they, they are actually creating knowledge. They are trying out stuff without fear of failure. And everyone is invited to participate, no matter what age, what looks, if they are disabled, if they are female, male, gay, whatever, it doesn't matter. And the user involvement is or has always been the driving force in esports because there's uh, quite some research on it by now. And there's, there's this one text by uh, Tobias Scholz from uh, University of Siegen, and he describes the members of the esports community as over energetic over-enthusiastic, you can see it here, and over-dynamic. So, sounds like a good fit for some projects to me. So, eSports is what is called an ecosystem of interest. You take part in an ecosystem because you love to, which is actually something that should be fostered. And within this ecosystem, there is a special case of entrepreneurship. And that is called user entrepreneurship. This is something I will, I will uh, dive a little deeper in a few seconds, but this is something that is very specific to these communities because you can only provide or develop new products and services if you are an insider. You could read a book about esports and listen to me, I don't know, for a week and you would not, still not feel like an insider because you need to be part of this community. Yes, that's a nice one, huh? Okay, so when we are talking about participation in esports, we are talking about this ecosystem. And the ecosystem right now can be described best like this. These are esports related professions. So there are jobs in esports today that are part of any of the categories. Okay? So there are nutrition experts, there are wellness and mental coaches. We were just yesterday we were having a conversation about about the coaches that uh, that are with Astralis. There's one from the military, there's one from the handball team. Um, quite diverse. And all of these jobs and all of these areas can actually be triggered if you do esports in your educational institution. Which does not mean that you need to offer, I don't know, performance optimization or, or administration jobs. This develops on its own within this ecosystem. A lot of major companies that are part of that ecosystem, one of the most famous probably being Twitch, acquired by Amazon in 2017 or something for 970 million US dollars, was quite small back then. Uh, is a thriving company. They, they are having these 923 million um, viewers and they are asking for these specialists. They are looking for web developers, they are looking for social media optimizers, they are looking for marketers, they are looking for press offices, etc, etc, etc. So there is a large number of jobs in Denmark in Europe and all over the world that is in connection with esports. And it's the same with other sports academies. I would always recommend a kid going to such a sports academy. You might be interested in football, go to such a football academy. Not because you are the next Messi, but because being part of that, you develop a completely different mindset and you create a network before you even start working. So, the people who go through these academies are well sought after. They are people to hire because they bring all of that already. So, if you are part of the esports ecosystem, you can um, go to television, you can go to a newspaper, you can go to a legal firm even. 
we have in Vienna, we have uh, one accountant that is specialized on esports, and we have one law firm that is specialized on esports. It's one only so far, but they are, they are coming. And these are the jobs of the future. Probably no one is able to, to, to predict what is going to happen, but this looks like it's going to stay. <laughs> So these are these ecosystems of interest. I won't go, go through all the, all the text in my slides. I, feel, I think it's boring. I guess you are probably able to read. And I was talking about it before. Ecosystems of interest are just something that you need to be part of. If you are able to use the potential that is presented within these, you can offer exciting opportunities for students and probably also for businesses and organizations within your community. Um, what's good about it is that even though a lot of adults say, well, you should come out of your cave and do something that makes sense and you should learn more, but the kids don't care. They do that anyway. And with that, they actually prepare for the work of tomorrow. And there are a lot of skills that are, um, are to be developed within this ecosystem. I need to hurry, I see that, that I'm a little late. Okay, so, um, finally, oh, almost finally. This is user entrepreneurship. It is specific because you can only be a user entrepreneur if you are an active part of a community. So, uh, you have that unique knowledge. You have a non-monetary motivation. We, were, we, were, we heard that before, I think, from, uh, from you, that it's not only about founding businesses. It's about creating something new that is of value. It might be for your community, it might be for your city or whatever. Um, for esports, there are certain industry characteristics. Esports is fun. And that's why um, users are just more likely to, to do that because they enjoy it. They enjoy discussing it, tinkering, prototyping and stuff like that. And this is very specific to an entertainment industry, uh, which eSports is. And finally, it is collective. It is not just one guy saying, okay, I am going to revolutionize the world. It's, it's like these hubs. It's, it's the place to be. If you are within this context, there are going to be a lot of new ideas. But gamers are different. I always need to include that slide. So if you think now, okay, I'm going to bring that to my business, I'm going to bring that to my, uh, to my institution, to my school, watch out for that. Okay? It's a prosumer culture, which means they are not only consuming, they are also producing at the same time. It's participatory, and we have so-called affinity spaces. So it's a group that belongs to the same space because they love to be there. This is very affirmative, and it is necessary uh, for these groups and these approaches to work. So you cannot do esports if you don't know anything about it. You need to be authentic within this ecosystem. Something that teachers are very much challenged by, by the way. Um, they are learners and teachers at the same time. They have a growth mindset and so on and so on and so on. I will go deeper into that in my workshop in the afternoon that everyone is going to attend to. And um, I would just like to show a quick one here. This is a book. It is written in German. As everyone has, has one Danish slide, I need to bring one German slide to a conference. And it's about skills that you learn in gaming. Uh, it's um, um, organization, systematic, methodical approach, adaptability, grit, communication, collaboration, all of these skills that everyone is talking about. I won't go too deep into that. That's what the workshop is for. And I would just, the photo is done. I would just like to show you that there is material already that you can use. There's this organization in the US called NASEF, 
North American Scholastic Esports Federation. They do quite an amazing job. They have big money and they develop esports projects and curricula for a few years now. This one is an English curriculum, esports entrepreneurship and English 10, <coughs> but it's on a higher academic level. It's not for basic skills teaching, it's rather if you do A levels or stuff like that. It's still interesting because it brings rather traditional literature courses together with entrepreneurship within the, the context of the esports ecosystem. One more thing, then I'm done. <laughs> you know these faces, I guess. At, at least this guy is probably pretty well known. You might have seen this guy too, and I would like to introduce this guy as well. This is uh, Eric Gustafsson. He's a student of a Swedish, um, what's the word for that? Gymnasiet. This, this high school. High school. High school yeah. And, and um, at the same time, uh, he started out as a new in-game leader in CSGO with Ninjas in Pyjamas, one quite famous team. Um, and um, he was able to do so because the school he attended has this eSports program. They use a platform called Gameplan and with that platform you can, you can do your regular studies and you can learn specific eSports skills. And he's one of the role models for eSports education nowadays. He's one of the kids who made it. And um, with this picture, I will say thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, have a nice lunch and come to my workshop. Right?